Hello, everyone. My name is Ikhlas bin Hamida, and I'm going to be presenting our work for the Hamlin Symposium on Medical Robotics. Our work is titled Sorosim, a MATLAB toolbox for soft robotics based on the geometric variable strain approach. This work was conducted by Anup Tijo Matthew, myself, Ikhlas bin Hamida, and Federico Randa. I will begin by giving an overview of the toolbox and then move on to a demonstration that shows how it can be used to model and simulate static and dynamic systems. So to begin with, I'd just like to note that since this uh, presentation's main focus is the toolbox, I will not be discussing the geometric variable strain approach in detail. Uh, if you're interested in the theory behind the toolbox, these are some references you can refer to, or you can tune in to Federico Renda's uh, presentation as part of the Hamlin Symposium on Medical Robotics uh, on the 11th of June. So this toolbox employs the geometric variable strain approach, which can be used to model soft, rigid, and hybrid open chain manipulators within the same work environment. The toolbox uses object-oriented programming, which allows several classes to work together and forms a powerful simulation tool. Uh, we use dialog boxes and apps to collect user input to ensure a user-friendly environment. The three main classes used in this toolbox are the link, linkage, and twist classes. Uh, the link acts as a building block to this toolbox where the user can define the links, uh, specify geometric properties, material properties, etc. And the linkage is a class where the user can connect different links previously created to create a manipulator. Uh, the manipulator can consist of soft, rigid, or can be a mixture of both of these types of links. Uh, the twist class is called within the linkage class and can be used to specify which degrees of freedom are active in this linkage and specify their magnitudes by uh, defining the joint vectors. I will start the demonstration now. Uh, so the first thing the user can do is run the startup file, which ensures that all the files you need are added to your path. Uh, you can begin by defining a variable and giving it the value of link. This is how you can define a link. So you would be prompted with a series of dialog boxes uh, to specify properties. In this case, for example, uh, you can specify the link type, whether it's soft or rigid. In my case, I'm going to use a soft uh, link. And here you can specify material properties or what kind of joint is attached to your link. Uh, after assigning all the material properties, you move on to the geometric properties, such as the length, Gaussian quadrature points, which will be used to solve the simulation, and the initial and final radius. If you've if you've chosen a, if you've chosen a circular cross section. So after you create your link, you can modify any of these properties that you've set initially by calling the link. Dot the property that you'd like to change, in this case, n underscore l, which is the number of cross sections used for the plotting. In this case, I'd like to reset it to 40. And then if you want to check it again, you'll see that the value has changed to 40. So you've created your first link. Uh, after the creation of your link, you can move on to creating a linkage by defining a variable and assigning it the value of linkage brackets. And in the brackets, you can put any of the links that you've previously uh, created. You can put more than one link by separating them by commas. So in this case, I only created one link, which is the linkage that I'd like to make. You are shown a plot of how your linkage looks so far, and you are prompted to activate what degrees of freedom you'd like uh, this uh, system to have, and the order of the polynomial that defines the motion of the strain. You can set the reference configuration. By setting all zeros, you have set no, um, uh, no initial strain. So you can define what kind of forces the system is subjected to. In this case, I'd like to add some gravity in the negative y direction. Uh, I don't want any external point forces or moments, so I will choose no. 
is the system actuated? Yes. You can define how many actuators you'd like the system to have. And then you are prompted if the cable actuation is fully inside the linkage. In my case, it is. There are no cables exposed. And then you can select from uh, various types of cable paths. In my case, I'd like to use a custom path. And I have a function for the Y and Z components that I previously uh, made. So I'd like to use that. So now, now that I've defined the Y and Z components of my cable, I can press OK. And now I can see how the path of the cable looks. So this is how my cable goes. After you're done, you can press done. So you've successfully uh, created your linkage with all of these properties. So now you can uh, start to perform some analysis. So to do a static study, you can just type S static. So S is the name of the linkage variable that you've created. And then you'd be prompted to enter the uh, actuation force that the cable is subjected to. So I'd like to check a negative 15 newtons. And the initial condition of the configuration is all zeros. So this is how my cable looks under this actuation force. It's bending down because of the gravity, but the actuation and the tension of the cable is causing deformation. So this is the static study. Uh, the answer you obtain is the joint vectors of this configuration. So if you set this to be the, your initial configuration, you can have the same pose that we've seen. So a dynamic study can be done by first, you need to save your output. So you define a time and QQD, which is the configuration and velocity of your system at different points in time. And then S, which is the linkage name, dot dynamics. So now I need to enter the force, the actuation force as a function of time, since this is a dynamic study. So I'm going for negative 10 into T. And then I'm prompted for the initial conditions, the configuration and the velocity, and how long I want the simulation to run for. So 10 seconds. Okay. And we can uh, so as the simulation runs, it will run until the t is equal to 10 seconds. Okay. So I will stop the simulation for now since I have already uh, computed these values and I will show you how the simulation looks. Okay. So uh, I already have pre-computed uh, values for the simulation. So once you obtain your T and QQD, the outputs of the dynamic simulation, you can use S. So I saved my previous linkage as S underscore P dot plot QQD, then T underscore P. QQD underscore P. So this is the time vector and the configuration and velocity vector of which are the solution of the dynamic simulation we just run. So based on the frame rate that you've chosen when creating your linkage, the uh, plot is plotted for every point in time based on the frame rate that you've chosen. And after this plotting function is done, uh, you can see uh, a saved, you can save a video of how this uh, simulation looks in real time. So I have a saved video here that I can show. This is the same simulation for 10 seconds. So starting from zero, the initial configuration, all zeros. 
subjected to gravity and then the tension force or the actuation force is gradually increasing until we reach the time of 10 seconds. So this is it for the dynamic simulation and we've seen the static simulation. Uh, this is the end of my presentation and I'd like to thank you all for your time and for your interest. Thank you.